please welcome to the stage Andy Bass from Ecovative. Not too long, though. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, so Ecovative is a material science company, and we're developing technologies and products to address two main challenges on planet Earth, and those are plastics pollution and the hyperproduction of livestock. And we're addressing this through the medium of mycelium. Mycelium is uh, the root structure or vegetative part of the mushroom that typically grows underground but we've developed the process to grow this up and out of a substrate into structural materials that have value in textiles, uh, whole cut meat applications, and, and, and much more. So we're, we're using this technology in what we call air mycelium uh, processes. And air mycelium are uh, these large growth chambers like you see on the screen here. Um, we have racks where the mycelium grows on these vertical shelves. Um, and by controlling the strains that we input, the, grow, uh, the environmental conditions, we can get different structural properties out of the material. And as you can see, these are, these are grown in very long sheets that we can then process into uh, various materials. And for the focus of this talk, I'll, I'll primarily talk about our Forager brand products, which are hides and foams. And with forager hides, our approach is really to uh, make mycelium the obvious choice amongst eco-conscious brands. We're working with the best tanneries in the world, some of the biggest brands in the world to make sure that our materials have the highest quality, highest performance uh, specifications for those applications in leather-like materials. The next product that Forager is bringing to market are technical foams. And today, typically technical foams are made of plastics. Um, more often now, you'll see bioplastics. But bioplastics also have the same end-of-life issues. Um, wh when, they were, when their use is done, they're still hanging around as pollutants. Um, so on the, um, sorry, this GIF is supposed to be working here, but uh, let's see, oops. Um, so with forager foams, the mycelium is 100% home compostable at the end of its life. Um, what you would see in the breathable section is that mycelium is an open cell foam, but it's insulating like a closed cell foam. And what this open structure does is it makes the material breathable like a non-woven. So it's interesting to have nature bring some unique functionality um, into the materials in this space. And one of the biggest things that Ecovative cares about is the circularity of our processes and our products. Um, and so the mycelium itself grows on a plant-based agricultural byproduct like hemp herd, uh, wood chips, seed hulls. We've actually validated over 700 different agricultural inputs that will work on our process. And what that does is really open up where we can grow mycelium in the world, so, so virtually anywhere. And the idea is to get close to where the production plants are going to be, where the products are being made, and have those materials grown locally. So once the mycelium is grown, um, it's 100% home compostable at the end of its life. When our partners process this into products for shoes and so forth, we work with them on how they finish the material, um, particularly using bio-based processes to uh, get as close to compostable at the end of life as possible. But really, this is, a, a, this is circular here in that the mycelium breaks down as a nutrient, not a pollutant at the end of its life. And to bring this to scale, we're really building an ecosystem here. Uh, we recently announced the acquisition of a production plant here in the Netherlands, about an hour from here in Venlo. Um, and what this does is bring raw material supply um, locally within this region. We've also partnered with a tannery that's about an hour away as well uh, here in the Netherlands. And we're sourcing all of our raw materials within about a 100 kilometer radius uh, between the Netherlands, uh, Belgium, and France. We also recently announced a partnership with Echo Leather, um, one of the world's leading tanneries that uh, is environmentally conscious, 
uh, as well as probably making some of the, the, the biggest headway in innovation with bio-based chemistries for these new materials. So with ECHO and our brand partners through um, a Fashion for Good Cooperative, like Best Seller, PVH, Pangaea, Wolverine Worldwide, and others, uh, we're, we're really working together to bring this new material to market and have a nice feedback loop going between each other. So um, if brands tell us they need to hit certain performance characteristics, we're going through this sort of design build test loop um, through this ecosystem here. And just to give you an idea of how we develop these new materials, um, this is sort of a simplified three-step approach. So a brand comes to us and, and they want uh, a material with, with characteristics of X, Y, and Z. And we say, okay, well, we have a mycelium strain library and these strains kind of have those characteristics. Let's put them in this high throughput screening method that we've developed, run them through a variety of different environmental conditions and see what kind of results we get. And we take those hits from that high throughput screening and we can then scale those up to the second uh, box that you see here, which is like prototype scale. So customers can actually make the products that they intend to put out into the market, do their performance and durability testing um, with, with that article. And then if it's not that great, we go back through this design build test cycle. Um, if it is great, then we have uh, ways that we can scale this up to pilot and commercial uh, uh, quantities. And speaking of how we scale up, so this has sort of been our journey over the last few years, going from bench scale to really a global farm scale. Um, it's important that what you do on the bench can translate throughout the scale up process, because it's nice, we, we've seen a lot of like, uh, I, I heard this term of uh, a perpetual fashion show of prototypes, and we certainly don't want to be stuck in that rut. We, to really make the change we want to see, we want to be in the market and, and have consumers using our products. Um, so one of the most important things that we've realized with scale is that there's about one and a half billion uh, kilos of installed mushroom farm capacity around the world. And what this means is we can retrofit those farms that already exist to grow our mycelium process. Um, we don't have to greenfield uh, new infrastructure, we can use what already exists. And this also gives the farmers uh, an economic incentive to grow this new material um, in the down cycles when they're not growing mushrooms. Um, so I, I mentioned sort of the supply chains and how important this is to making sure that you're bringing to market um, your products at a, at a cost that consumers can bear. Um, so having visibility at the raw material side all the way through to how the materials are processed and finished and taken to market uh, is incredibly important and something that we're uh, wor working closely within our ecosystem to monitor. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so as we're, as we're vertically integrating the raw material supply and, and, and the growing of mycelium, one thing we're conscious of too is not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, the fashion industry already exists and we just wanna be able to slot into the infrastructure that's already there. And so uh, an example of this is when we deliver a mycelium hide to a tannery, it's at the stage of a wet blue chemistry, meaning that we've avoided all the upstream sort of toxic processes and chemicals that are required. Um, and, and simply deliver a product that's ready to be dyed and finished and handed off to the brand partner. Um, so we focused on forager mostly today, but we are in the market elsewhere with some my mycelium materials. Forager is sold out through 2024. Uh, we're continuing to bring scale online, um, but have a, a great partner network that we're um, pretty much at capacity with. We also have um, a food division called My Forest Foods, and um, uh, our first product to market is bacon. We're in about 50 stores in the US right now um, and expanding that rapidly this year. We're also selling mushroom packaging materials, which um, are available, available globally um, here in, the, in Europe, UK, and uh, US and Australia. And the, the goal with the packaging is to really obviate the need for styrofoam uh, in protective packaging applications. And huh, my video, can we get the video to play? If not, it's okay, I have 
20 seconds left, I'll, I'll narrate um, what you should be seeing is, is really the, the world's largest mycelium farm. And so we have about 11,000 square meters in upstate New York where we're uh, gr growing the mycelium today, primarily for food applications in the US. Um, but um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I invite, it's a pretty impressive facility and I invite you to come and visit if you're in the, in the area. Um, we'll be happy to give you a tour. Um, I have materials uh, at my table out here, so if anybody wants to see things and touch things up close, um, I have those, and also my email is here as well if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.